Assalamu alaikum dear students. So welcome to a very special course on scientific writing, part number four. I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. So in this particular lecture, so we will have a discussion on the journal uh, organizations that its name is uh, Embraer. That is in short introductions, uh, material methods, uh, results and uh, discussions. So let's proceed towards today's lecture. Uh, just like we mentioned, uh, many journal articles follow a set of organizations named uh, AMRED. So what actually uh, AMRED stand for? AMRED basically stand for I for uh, introductions, uh, M for uh, materials and methods, uh, R for uh, RA for uh, uh, results, uh, A for N and D for uh, discussion. So AMRED uh, MRED basically stand for introductions, material and methods, research and discussion. This is basically the pattern of any scientific journal. Whenever you study a scientific paper, a scientific uh, articles, uh, so you will know that uh, these things, I mean the introduction sections, material and methods, uh, research and discussions, these are the very common parts of every research article, so, I mean, so we can say the scientific uh, articles. So that's been uh, shortly summarized as uh, AMRED. So in a strong ending, uh, you analyze results and give a future perspective. I mean, uh, we discussed in the previous lecture about the, uh, the title, the importance of the titles, uh, then we came to the abstract and then to uh, the introduction sections, we describe uh, the importance of the introduction sections. Uh, we mentioned that it's actually the backbone of any research articles. It contains a lot of information about the other part, about the other important sections of the paper. So uh, uh, then you come to the ending, and in ending we have the conclusions. Uh, what actually the conclusion means? And the conclusions, you analyze the reasons. I mean, uh, you try to tell the audience, you try to tell the uh, your readers that what actually you have concluded from your work. And uh, on the basis of your conclusions, uh, you also specified uh, future directions. I mean, uh, you want to give a directions to your audience that we have done this much of the work, uh, we concluded this and f dash dash parameter are changed so that particular thing is possible and the uh, future so that you specified as future perspective I mean that is uh, the ending of your uh, research article and a good research article always has strong conclusions and uh, a good future perspective uh, so uh, I mean in a, a, a future perspective uh, I mean, we analyze results uh, from overall perspective, and that uh, we have several options. That is, uh, as a future uh, perspective, we can make recommendations, uh, discuss from the work, uh, repeat limitations. I mean, you have done a lot of work, you have done a lot of good work, you conclude uh, from what you have found and then you make recommendations if uh, and the recommendation is being based on the analysis of your results i mean uh, you you suggest changes or you uh, suggest some other parameter and on the basis of those suggestion or parameter you recommend uh, some future work or some futures uh, discussions or uh, you show some limitations of your work and the future so uh, you also need to use appendices to supply backgrounds uh, for secondary audience. You know that we always have a secondary audience. So for uh, in order to deal with the secondary audience, you should uh, need to use the appendices like we have a good example here. That is appendix A. So appendix A is basically concerned about the greenhouse effect. So here you should explain this concern. I mean, the panic the should be at the end of the manuscript. And uh, I mean, here we have mentioned it short, but here it is in detail that what is this concern? So uh, the concern uh, about the greenhouse effect, I mean, it's the detail of that concern. And it is, uh, should be like this, for almost 100 years, experts have been concerned with the increasing uh, concentrations of gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrogen oxide. In the earth lower atmosphere uh, these gases are natural byproducts of uh, combustions so figure a one illustrate the correlation between the global temperature and the carbon dioxide uh, concentrations 
So use appendices to supply secondary or tangential information to primary readers. And that is uh, appendix B, uh, project uh, stompery. So it should be like this. Uh, I mean, you should provide, uh, I mean, uh, you, you should use appendices to supply secondary or tangential information to a primary readers. Uh, like uh, we have an example here of appendix B, that is uh, project uh, stompery. So in 1961, the United States Weather uh, Bureau and the Department of Defense uh, began a project to produce the strength of hurricanes. The project called Project Starfury uses cloud uh, seeding, a process used to produce a rainfall and reduce hell in the thunderstorm. And Project Starfury silver iodide crystals, a similar in structure to ice, are dispersed by airplanes in the upper, re upper reaches of the cloud formation just outside the hurricane's eyes where the winds are highest. Uh, initial results show that a uh, wind speed decreases between 15 to 30 percent after uh, the city. I mean this, this is a good example of Appendix B. Uh, for second reason, uh, I use a glossary to define the unfamiliar terms. I mean you, you should also use the glossary uh, to define the uh, unfamiliar or undefined term. For example, uh, here we have used a glossary uh, 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 as an example as burst point. So uh, here we have explained what is mean by a burst point. So a burst point, uh, the exact point in space where an atomic bomb is uh, detonated. And be remember, uh, I mean it is good to have a glossary at the end of your article or sometime you put that even in the startup, your article or thesis or a refer. But uh, mainly, if you're dealing with the with a research article, so the research article is best to uh, define uh, the abbreviations uh, or such a terminologies uh, at the start uh, of introductions, or even everywhere in the introductions where you first use it. I mean, normally the I mean the experts suggest like that that if you whenever you want to use uh, such a thing, so it's better to define them when you first use it in the introduction sections. Uh, along with the best part, we have clear visibility. What it mean by clear visibility? Clear visibility mean a weaving range of 20 miles. Similarly, we have fallout. What is mean by fallout? Uh, the descent to the earth, uh, the earth's surface of the radioactive particles from a cloud contaminated with the fission product of a nuclear explosion. Uh, similarly, we have hypocenters. What is hypocenter? Hypocenter means the point and the earth surface directly below the burst point, also called ground zero. I mean, it's a famous word for hypocenter is uh, ground uh, zero. So these are how, I mean, you define the unfamiliar uh, term. So that's all uh, we have for this lectures. Uh, thanks for watching, but stay tuned for the next lecture in Sardiving Writing because in the next lectures we will have a discussions on the formatting of scientific document. That is very important while you're writing the scientific literature or you're writing the scientific document. So stay tuned with lecture number five. That will be very soon, uh, very soon uh, uh, in this series. So till then, bye bye.